Lesson 6.7, Subtract Mixed Numbers with Renaming. We can use renaming to find the difference of two mixed numbers. First, we write equivalent fractions using a common denominator. Next, we use multiplication and addition to rename each mixed number as a fraction greater than 1. Then we subtract the fractions and write the difference in simplest form. By writing the mixed numbers as equivalent fractions first, it'll determine if we need to use renaming. We look at the numerator of each fraction. If the numerator of the minuend is less than the numerator of the subtrahend, we'll need to use renaming. And 1 is less than 3, so we cannot subtract until we use renaming. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction is equal to one whole. If we have three-thirds, that's equal to one whole. Even if we have 52 52-52nds, that's equal to one whole. It doesn't matter how great the numerator and denominator are. If they're the same, it's equal to one. That works with decimals, and it works with variables in algebra. If the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction is equal to one whole. Our minuend was 2 and 1 fifth. We can rename it as 5 fifths for one whole, another 5 fifths for now we have 2 whole, plus the 1 fifth. That would be 2 and 1 fifth. Because all of the denominators are the same, we can just add the numerators. 5 plus 5 plus 1 is 11 fifths. And we can rename the mixed number by grouping these fractions differently. We can use a 1 whole plus a 5 fifths plus 1 fifth. That would be 1 and 6 fifths. Then the numerator of the minuend will be great enough to subtract from. And we can use the renamed mixed number to complete our subtraction. We had 2 and 1 fifth minus 1 and 3 fifths. We changed the 2 and 1 fifth into 1 and 6 fifths. Now, we have 6 minus 3, which is 3. That's 3 fifths, and 1 minus 1 is 0. We have 3 fifths. And we make sure our difference is in simplest form when 1 is the only common factor for the numerator and denominator. We can also subtract by renaming both mixed numbers as fractions greater than 1. 2 and 1 fifth is 5 fifths plus 5 fifths plus 1 fifth, that's 11 fifths. 1 and 3 fifths is a 5 fifths plus a 3 fifths, that's 8 fifths. 11 minus 8 is 3, we write it over that common denominator 5, it's 3 fifths. We can quickly rename mixed numbers as fractions greater than 1 by using multiplication, addition, and mental math. The first thing we do is multiply the whole number by the denominator, 2 times 5. We add that product to the numerator. We have 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 more is 11. We use the given denominator, that 5, we have 11 fifths. Multiply the whole number to the denominator and add the numerator as our new numerator. Here we have 5 and 2 thirds minus 2 and 3 fifths. We see the denominators are different. We need to give them a common denominator first, and we can just multiply them 3 times 5 to use 15 as a common denominator. 3 times 5 is equal to 15, which means we need to multiply the numerator 2 by 5 also. We get a 10. For this one, 5 times 3 is 15, so we need to multiply this numerator times 3, just like we did to the denominator. We get 9 fifteenths. We can subtract 10 minus 9 to get a 1. That's 1 fifteenth. And 5 minus 2 is 3. So by first giving them common denominators, we see that we don't need to use renaming, though we would get the same answer if we did. Why do extra math if you don't need to? Now, we could have changed these both to fractions greater than 1 or renamed this to 4 and 25 fifteenths 
but we didn't need to because this numerator from the minuend was great enough to subtract the, minu the numerator from the subtrahend. Here we have 9 and 1 6 minus 3 and 3 fourths. They have different denominators. Both 6 and 4 can meet at the multiple 12. And 4 times 3 is 12, so 3 times 3 is 9. 6 times 2 is 12, so 1 times 2 is 2. We have 9 and 2 twelfths minus 3 and 9 twelfths. By first giving them a common denominator, we see that we do need to use renaming. This 2 numerator for the minuend is not great enough to subtract the 9 numerator from the subtrahend. We can take 1 away from 9 and make it an 8, and the 1 we took away we can turn into a 12 twelfths using the same numerator and denominator, and having the 2 twelfths over here. We can add the 12 twelfths and the 2 twelfths to get 14 twelfths, so we have 8 and 14 twelfths. Now we can take away the subtrahend 3 and 9 twelfths. 14 minus 9 is 5, that's 5 twelfths. 8 minus 3 is 5. We have 5 and 5 twelfths. So it's very important to first give them a common denominator. Then we decide whether we need to use renaming or not. Here we have 3 and 2 fifths minus 1 and 1 half. 2 is almost half of 5, so we can use 3 and a half as a benchmark, minus 1 and a half for our estimate, and 3 and a half minus 1 and a half is equal to 2. They have different denominators, so we give them the same denominator. They can meet at the multiple 10, and 2 times 5 is 10, so 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10, so 2 times 2 is 4. We have 3 and 4 tenths minus 1 and 5 tenths. And the numerator for the minuend isn't great enough to subtract the numerator from the subtrahend. And we can turn both of these mixed numbers into improper fractions. Fractions greater than 1 are often called improper fractions. We multiply the whole number times the denominator and add the numerator. 3 times 10 is 30 plus 4 is 34. We use that denominator. 1 times 10 is 10 plus 5 more is 15. We have 15 tenths. Now we have 34 tenths minus 15 tenths. And 34 minus 15 is 19. We have 19 tenths. We can pull out a 10 tenths from this and have 9 tenths left over. 19 tenths is equal to 10 tenths plus 9 tenths. That means it's equal to 1 whole and 9 tenths. And our sum is reasonable because 1 and 9 tenths is close to 2. 9 is very close to 10. It's almost like we have 2 whole. Here we have 4 and 1 seventh minus 1 and 3 eighths. 7 and 8, we can just multiply them to find a common denominator, 56. 7 times 8 is 56. And 7 times 8 is 56, so we need to multiply 1 times 8 and get an 8. 8 times 7 is 56, so we need to multiply 3 times 7, and we get a 21. We can see that this numerator is not great enough to subtract 21. And we could do 4 times 56 plus 8, but it's faster to rename one whole as 5656 if mental math is difficult. So this 4 becomes a 3. The one we took away becomes a 5656. And then we have the 856. We add these two fractions together and get 6456. So we have 3 and 6456. We just slide this one over as 1 and 2156. 64 minus 21 is 43. We have 43, 56. 3 minus 1 is 2. Our difference is 2 and 43, 56. Now, I know this looks like a very large numerator and denominator that maybe it can be simplified, but 43 only has the factors 1 and 43. So our difference is in simplest form. 
Now here we have a word problem that looks like it's giving a lot of information. Let's see what it says. Mr. Lee planted vegetables in his garden in three sections with five rows of six per section. Squirrels, rabbits, and birds ate some of the vegetables before Mr. Lee could harvest them. He planted corn in the first section and was able to harvest from two and a half rows. He planted carrots in the second section and was able to harvest four and one third rows. In the third section, he planted asparagus and was able to harvest all five rows. How many more rows was Mr. Lee able to harvest from the second section than the first section? So we need to summarize this problem. That means we need to restate, re-say the important facts in a shortened way. So here's a summary of what was important. There are three sections with five rows of six in each. Two and a half rows were harvested in the first section. Four and one third rows were harvested in the second section. And we need to find the difference between section one and section two. Was it important to know the third section that he planted asparagus and was able to harvest all five rows? No, that was unnecessary information. We don't need to know about section three. We just need to compare section one and section two. We have four and one thirds in section, in the second section. We need to find the difference between that and two and a half rows from the first section. We see they have unlike denominators. We can do two times three is six and have them meet at the common denominator six. Three times two is six, so we multiply the numerator by two to get two six. Two times three is six, so we multiply the numerator one times three to get a three. We can see the numerator in this minuend isn't great enough to subtract the numerator in the subtrahend. We can turn these both into fractions greater than one. We multiply four times six, the whole number times the denominator and get a 24. We add two from the numerator to get a 26, and we use that denominator six. Here we have two times six, which is 12, plus three is 15. We have 15 six. Now we can subtract 26 minus 15, which is 11. That gives us 11 six. 11 six is equal to a six six plus a five six. We have one whole and five six. We have one and five sixth rows. The, so that's how many more rows Mr. Lee was able to harvest from that second section than the first section. So remember as you're finding the difference between mixed numbers, that the first thing you do is give them a common denominator because you may not have to use renaming. Once you give them a common denominator, you may just be able to subtract those numerators. And keep in mind that you can click on the description and there'll be helpful videos, links in there from our previous lessons, and there'll be links to PayPal and Patreon if you want to help support my dogs and I. Our next lesson, 6.8, we're going to learn about patterns with fractions. We're going to make sequences using addition and subtraction. I think you can do this. I'm really proud of you for watching math videos and have a wonderful day. Bye.